What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're looking at the 2024 Yamaha Grizzly 700 Special Edition. Folks, I'm super excited. I loaded the machine up, brought it out to the house. You can tell we're out in the woods. We're gonna ride this thing around. We're gonna check out the transmission, four-wheel drive system, brakes, ride, all that kind of stuff. Kind of give you some honest feedback of what we like and don't like about the Grizzly. I don't know that there's much not to like, but uh, we're gonna talk about all those things. If you're used to the channel and you've been here a lot, well, thanks for coming back. If you're not, well, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. As you know, we do most of our videos at the shop, Extreme Power Sports in Opelika, Alabama. But again, like I said, we're out at the house. So we're gonna do something a little bit new today. Um, tell us what you like, what you don't like about the video. Um, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. We'll try to do better next time, right? Uh, but let's get into it and talk about some of these key features on this vehicle. And uh, we'll go from there, we'll take it for a ride, all right? All right, folks, like I said, this is the special edition. This is the 2024 model. What's cool about the 24, it comes with the 27 inch Maxxis Zilla tires on it on the 14 inch wheel, excuse me, and also has the painted plastic. This is not a molded plastic. This is painted plastic. I apologize, it got rained on, it's a little filthy. Really, really, really digging the paint scheme. I love Yamaha's paint schemes. They're almost always awesome. That's all I'm gonna say. What I do like about the Grizzly, I mean, look at this profile. It just looks like it is ready to hit the trail. If you know about Yamahas, you know they make a Grizzly and they make a Kodiak. The Kodiak really more of your, uh, I'll call it your work machine, something like you do around the, the farm, a little more utilitarian. The Grizzly can still do all that, but it's a little more focused, a little more on recreational trail riding, and just gives you kind of a sportier package, if you will. Uh, check this out, you got LED headlights on it. You also have the third light, which is awesome. So if you're in the woods at night, when you turn them handlebars, the light's gonna turn with you, all right? Uh, full protection and cover around the motor, which is nice. Uh, keeps the mud out of there, which is awesome. On the back side, of course, we got full independent suspension, right? Everybody knows that, nothing new. Does have a hitch on it, two inch receiver, towing capacity, 1300 pounds. And check this out, we do have a little trunk in here, which is awesome. You can store a little bit of your stuff in there. Um, you got some factory uh, covers for the A-arms and to keep crap from, you know, hopefully coming up and poking them CV boots and everything, which is a big pain in the butt. If you, do, if you poke those boots, if you don't know this, grease is all going to run out eventually. You're going to get debris in there and your axle is going to be crap. So don't do that. Pay attention to them. If you see grease, uh, you don't want to get you a new boot, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, fuel tank on the right hand side, okay, which is nice. It is not up high. So if you look up here, look at that. Boom, more storage, which is awesome. Don't know, I don't know if there's any other vehicle that has that really or not, to be honest with you. I can't remember off the top of my head. Maybe something, but most of your Hondas and Yamahas, or excuse me, Honda, Suzuki, all that does not have storage like that on the tank, which is nice. You do have a dry box over here on the left. This is similar to a Suzuki, speaking of Suzuki. Uh, if you're looking at a Suzuki, you'd be looking at a 700 King Quad, or excuse me, a 750 King Quad. Uh, you do have a 12 volt outlet, which is nice, right? Check that out. Key switch right there, of course. And let's talk about the full wheel drive system real quick, all right? We pretty much covered the exterior body. Um, actually, by the way, check this out. Pull this little cover off, boom, there's your dipstick right there. Talk about easy access. Uh, several brands have different little covers like this, but uh, this is one of the nicest and easiest to use, if you ask me. Some of them kind of a pain in the butt to get back in with the grommets. We'll turn the key power on real quick. Check out the dash. Nothing super, super fancy. It's just kind of basic, but it gets the job done. Of course, you've got EPS light, gear indicator on the, on the uh, left-hand side. Fuel gauge right here on the right. Speedometer, odometer, trip meter, all that fun stuff. And folks, I'm getting ate up with mosquitoes, so I hope you appreciate this video. Trip A, trip B right uh, service indicator and all that kind of fun stuff uh, you go back to your voltage output temperature clock back to your hours overall and back to that all right you reset button there all right let's talk about this start button self-explanatory of course we're going to turn it off so we don't want it to run while we're talking light switch off on and high beam okay kill switch you saw me use there this is their override so one cool thing about the yamaha if you put this guy into full wheel drive, you lock it, which means it is going to be fully locked right there, okay? This is an override button that will let you go to max RPM when the differential is locked on the front, okay? 
very, very cool. So if you're really in a bind, you need the maximum traction, you need the maximum power output, folks, that's what you do. Hold the override button, all that kind of fun stuff. And you, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's, oh, let me hit it again. There you go. He's got all the indicators there on the dash for your full wheel drive. And folks, I think that's about it. So we're going to probably set the camera down. We're going to do a little riding and uh, then we'll give you some feedback after we're done riding, okay? Say hello to my friend. Property butts up against a farm over here. We've got goats and horses and all kind of fun stuff. All right, we've got a little creek crossing right here. Just gonna go slow. We're not looking to sling mud. I do have the differential locked. And no problem whatsoever. Do you have it in low range for this little video? It's a little muddy, not really that bad. I don't want to sling mud. We got the differential locked. I don't think I mentioned how it has power steering. I mean, look at that, super easy. This thing's a beast with these tires, the diff lock, low range, I mean, everything you need. All right, folks, so final impressions. Um, rides really good. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it is the um, most plush uh, ATV out there. It's a little, it was a little bouncy. You might have saw that on one of the little uh, loops that we did. Um, not bad though, rides pretty good. The seat is very soft, which is awesome. The transmission, Worked really well. Maybe a slight touchy, maybe a little notchy, uh, you know, kind of when it gets bound up. You know how CVTs are. If you're very ninny, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but otherwise, it worked great. Full drive system, engaged and disengaged beautifully, flawlessly awesome. You saw in the one clip, we, you know, we locked it into, uh, locked the differential in the full drive, put it in low range, and it just kind of crawled right through that little creek thing with the rocks. Didn't miss a beat. No slip of a tire at all. Um, really does what it's supposed to do. Really, I'm going to say it uh, would make a great recreational ATV. Um, pretty peppy for a single cylinder 700. It is not the fastest machine in the class. Uh, you all know that. Uh, I'm not telling you anything new right there that you don't know if you've been researching these units. I don't know what top speed is off the top of my head. I didn't open it up. I'm not trying to beat up on the machine being brand new, uh, but it is definitely peppy. Um, I could see buying one for sure around the house. What I really like about the Yamaha compared to a lot of the other ATVs, and you know, I'm six foot three, I've told you this in the videos before, but a lot of the ATVs, it seems like the bars are maybe a touch lower. So it seems like you're more like this sometimes. The Yamaha handlebars, and the Yamahas have done this for years, which is cool, is the bars come up higher. So for a taller guy, I really, really like having the taller bar that's a little closer to me, which is nice. Uh, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Everything's at fingertip level. You know, as far as what you need other than the shifter, um, I'm sold. So again, folks, if you liked the video, and I hope you did like the video, that's kind of a, uh, you know, a, a 30 second demonstration, I like to call it, um, kind of the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, if you did like the video, hit the like and subscribe button. I appreciate it if you tag along with us for more videos. And we got a whole lot more coming. Maybe we'll do some more out here at the house and uh, maybe we'll get some uh, other models where we can kind of do some comparisons side by side, like the shootout videos I've done in the past. And uh, we haven't really done that for ATVs, but uh, that sounds like something we could do. I kind of like that. If you have some other ideas, if you've been watching the videos the whole time, if, you like, if you've like, if you got some other ideas you want to see us do, um, let us know. Put it down in the comments. Um, I'll respond back to you. I read pretty much all the comments. Uh, so tell us again what you like, what you don't like, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Appreciate y'all watching.